Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. My life has come full circle as we speak. I got this gorgeous sunset uh, on me, and I have a gorgeous uh, rose right here. Just a little behind the scenes. When I was uh, 10 years old, I was at the Seaford Cineplus. I was watching Titanic, and I had my first French kiss. It wasn't in the scene uh, she was in, but it was her movie, The Titanic. Uh, uh, we've been talking all week. Uh, you've been here, um, I think, for over like a week. Two weeks. This is my second Sunday here. Right. Frances Fisher. Hi. Frances Fisher. Great actress. And um, you get it. Uh, it seems you get it. Uh, there's been other, uh, you know, celebrity uh, activists here as well. But uh, you kind of see the complete uh, disregard, the complete, uh, you know, inhumane treatment. Uh, of Native Americans and also how that ties into just the greed, the greed of, yeah. of, of this country. Uh, now that now that you've been here for, you know, almost two weeks, what, what's your what's your kind of take uh, seeing the multiple layers here? Well, to me, it's a human rights issue. Um, uh, the desecration of the land, uh, the ancestors are buried here. I have good friends whose ancestors are buried up there and it's heartbreaking. Uh, they're being disrespected. They've been dis disrespected ever since the European white people um, came and and uh, created. You know, it was genocide. Put everybody in concentration camps. Called them reservations, and it's happening again. And now they're saying enough is enough. It's just too much. Uh, the energy in the camp is unbelievable. I've watched through Shailene Woodley. She's the one who got me uh, aware of what was going on. And the people here are peaceful. Of course, there are instigators that are here that want to start a little trouble, but that's a very small minority of the people in the camp. And the prayer circle that you witnessed today with about 450, 500 people, the elder did say that we will do it through peace and prayerfulness because that is really what will ground us and that's the only way that uh, this is going to change. I was on the bridge on Sunday, last Sunday, when uh, the Morton County Militarized Police attacked the water protesters and it was really ugly. Um, I didn't get onto the front lines because I didn't want to uh, get pepper sprayed, but I was right behind them, so I was able to see a lot of what was going on and the lies that were perpetrated by the Morton County Police, saying that they were spraying people with water cannons because they wanted to put out fires. Well, it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that they were shooting hurt people, as you mentioned, Sophia, and um, that night, um, I had three medics come to my hotel room to shower. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, people were still being uh, brought in. Uh, they told me that they lit warming fires near the bridge so that the people who were being sprayed with ice-cold water, uh, because they were suffering from hypothermia, they lit fires to warm them. That, those were the only fires that our people lit, is to protect the people. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very sad day. I mean, we got the uh, letter yesterday from the Army Corps of Engineers saying that everybody at Ochetti has to clear the camp by December 5th. Interestingly enough, uh, so far there are 2,000 uh, veterans who are coming. Um, we hope and we pray that nobody does anything stupid because this is a big deal. You know, I want to ask you because you're in the, you know, movie business and TV business and I've heard from several people and I even feel it. It's almost like watching like, um, you know, like Jarhead or, uh, you know, Saving Private Ryan out here. It's, it, it's, I've never seen anything like this in America with this, the, the planes flying overhead and the militarized police and the grenades and this and that for people holding prayer signs and people, um, you know, singing and uh, the most violent thing they have is a wooden bridge, you know. Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen anything like this in, in this country? It was frightening. I'm not, not firsthand. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to have been protesting the Vietnam War. Um, that got pretty ugly, too. But 
in this day and age, in the Obama administration, that this is happening is, is outrageous because I can only imagine what will happen on January 21st when the other guy gets in. Um, it's, it, it was a very frightening experience to see, and you kind of wonder how, how scared must these cops be to show up in riot gear and try to blow back peaceful people who are praying and singing. It doesn't make any sense. It's outrageous. And then the other day when they put up the, the razor wire to keep people from coming onto their own land where their ancestors are buried, that's, it, it's, it's so insulting and disrespectful. And uh, obviously the campaign just ended, but you know, you've heard the platitudes, like America is this city on a shining hill and we're, you know, this latest campaign, we're gonna make it great again and stronger together and all this stuff. Um, you know, I don't wanna generalize that it's, the country is, you know, a fraud, but uh, all of this is happening out in the open. You know, chemical weapons are being used. Uh, a, a young girl's arm was nearly blown off. Um, we have the law is being broken right now, right in front of us. Yeah. They're not supposed to even be on that land. Yeah. Um, and you have President Obama pardoning a turkey. Yes. Uh, you have uh, pardoning a turkey on Thanksgiving. He, par you know, that's what he spent his day doing: pardoning a freaking turkey. So, what's the cognitive dissonance here? Because it seems there is a massive disconnect. Obviously, the mainstream media hasn't been there. I don't really think we need them anyway, but obviously our, our political leaders, uh, they're just looking the other way here. Well, you know, um, Kendrick Eagle is one of the uh, youth who started this movement when they, he and his compadres ran from Standing Rock to uh, Washington, D.C. to talk to President Obama to say, come help us. And there's an amazing video that Lori Woodley made that has gone viral that's got, gotten over 2,400,000 hits already because President Obama promised Kendrick that he, as long as he was in office, he would do everything he can to help the indigenous people. And so far it's been silent. And, you know, President Obama likes to show himself as a good father. One of the things about parenting is if you tell your child something and you make a promise and you can't keep it, you have to have the courage to face that child, look him in the eyes or her, and say, I'm sorry, I made a promise to you and I cannot fulfill it. Please forgive me. But President Obama hasn't even done that. Now, I don't know what kind of behind the scenes back channel talking is going on, but what he needs to do is deny the easement and, and give the Ocheti tribe a, a permit to continue camping here because it's not right to make them move either. Winter is coming. They've been winterizing and they're here for the long haul. We should have people in our government who are taking care of the people, the least fortunate. We all know that, you know, um, our history books have been uh, untrue. Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States is the one that everyone should watch, should read, uh, because it talks about what what we did to the Native Americans. I can't call them Native Americans, the indigenous people whose land this is, the original environmentalists who know how to take care of the earth, who know how to take care of the water, and take care of seven generations to come. The black snake and all of that, uh, what that implies, the, the corporate greed and the money people, um, Citizens United, all of that is so disrespectful because they're not thinking about even their children, certainly not seven generations from now. And uh, last question, just because I think there's been a lot of uh, uh, coverage of the bad things we see, mm -hmm. but uh, you've been a camp uh, often. Every day. Every can day. you can yeah. tell, people, uh, tell people the beautiful connections you see, uh, the com communities and many communities that are formed. I think people should know, uh, you know, what this, what this uh, Standing Rock is really about. Uh, Ocheti Sakawin is a big, big place where all of the tribes have gathered. That's the other thing. One would think that the media would be interested in the fact that there are over 300 tribes represented here, tribes who were warring with each other, all of their existence and they've all dropped 
everything and come here to stand together because water is life. We all need water. All living things need water. That's an amazing thing. The, the cook tents, the, the medical tents, the women's tent, the emotional healing tent, uh, there's a tent that's full of uh, sewing machines. Women, uh, uh, one of the women made me a dress that I could go do a sweat in. Uh, there are prayer circles all the time. There are sacred fires. There's singing. There's dancing. Everything is about um, celebrating and praying. I've never heard people talk about praying so much. This, this culture is about honoring the earth and honoring the creator and the hugs we get. Have you ever been hugged better than here? By you, yes. <laughs> well, you know, in Hollywood, it's like the Hollywood hug is going like that, right? Here, everybody puts their head onto your heart, and we hug for 20 seconds, and then that's the exchange of the energy that actually heals. I felt it. I was so sad on Monday after the attacks, and people were just walking around, hugging each other and saying, it's all right. We're stronger. We're stronger than the black snake. We're stronger than the militarized police because we have spirit. We have the spirit. Thanks so much. A hug. Uh.